Nix flakes are a very simple concept, but while they are simple, the Nix ecosystem surrounding them is certainly not. And so in this video I'll explain what flakes are, what flakes are not, where you want to use them and most importantly why you want to use them. So without further ado, let's get straight to configuration. So flakes is an experimental feature of the Nix package manager, they enforce a uniform structure for Nix projects, pin versions of their dependencies in a log file and make it more convenient to write reproducible Nix expressions. And unless you already know what flakes do, this definition probably doesn't help you understand them any better. But don't worry, because by the end of this video, we'll analyze everything you need to know to begin using flakes and once again return to it. And the best way to learn something is by doing it yourself. So to better understand Flakes, start your Nix OS PC, open your VM or simply install Nix on any Unix machine and repeat the steps after me. I promise you'll understand Flakes in no time. So to finally try out Flakes, we first have to enable them. Flakes are an experimental feature of Nix, but they've been experimental for many years at this point. And since their introduction, Flakes have been widely adopted by the community, to the point that it is now harder to find Nix repos that don't use Flakes than those that do. There are several ways to enable flakes depending on your setup, so if you're using NixOS, you can simply add this line anywhere in your configuration and rebuild your system. If you are using Home Manager, you can add these lines to your home.nix instead. And if you are not using any of those, you can simply add this one line to your Nix package manager configuration file. Now that the flakes are enabled, let's try to initialize one and get to know it better. Create a directory anywhere in your system, cd into it and run nixflake init. This command will initialize a basic nixflake that we can later use to serve nix code to several nix commands. Let's check it out and see that by default it contains a description, which can be anything you want, the inputs that allow our flake to download other flakes and you'll see why we want to do it later in the video, and finally outputs, which in this case is filled with some packages. Your flake may look slightly different depending on your system and time when you are watching this video, but generally it should be pretty similar. So before editing this flake, let's first try running a nix run command in its parent directory. We'll immediately see that it will start downloading some 40 plus megabytes of something, warn us about creating a log file and output hello world. Ok, so what did just happen? Well, every nix command that can interact with flakes has a different purpose. Nix run runs a package, Nix build builds a package, Nix develop activates a development shell, Nix OS rebuild rebuilds your Nix OS system, and Home Manager rebuilds your home configuration. But since there are so many commands that can work with a flake, flakes allow us to define multiple outputs. And each one of these commands will look for Nix code that is intended to be used by it. So Nix run and Nix build will look for packages.currentsystemarchitecture.default, Nix develop for devshells.system.default, NixOS rebuild for NixOS configurations.hostname and Home Manager for home configurations.username, with each one of these being a different kind of output, because you obviously cannot activate a normal package as a NixOS system and you cannot enter a NixOS system as a shell. That simply doesn't make any sense, because every output has a different purpose. And by using the nixflake show command, we can even check the outputs that our flake provides and see that we do in fact have a default package for our current architecture, which is going to be x86-64 Linux in most cases. There's also a hello package there, but where do they come from? Let's take a look at our flake again and see that the packages.default output is assigned to self.packages.hello, and packages.hello is assigned to some nixpackages.legacypackages.hello. Alright, now what's going on here? This is probably the most confusing part, but bear with me. So the outputs attribute of a flake is not a regular set, but actually a function indicated by this parameter and colon syntax. The parameter contains self and nix packages in this case, and both of them are flakes, self being the flake which you are currently looking at, and nix packages is coming from our inputs. So what we are essentially telling our flake to do in this file is go ahead and download a flake from this URL, call it nix packages, and then run the outputs function, passing it itself and all the inputs defined above, which once again is just nix packages in this case. And when we are declaring the default package, we are referring to flake self and asking it to give us the packages.x8664linux.hello, meaning our flake will try to evaluate itself again, look for this output, find it here 
And finally, go into another flake called Nix Packages and find the output located at legacypackages.x8664linux.hello of that flake. This hello here is simply a GNU Hello World program, which is packaged in Nix Packages, and we are treating Nix Packages as just another flake. Legacy packages here does not imply that the packages are old or something, and the only reason it's used here is because Nix packages provides so many packages that running the Nix flake show command on it would take literal ages to show each one of them. Otherwise, Nix packages flake would probably also have a regular packages structure, just like you have in your flake right now. Also, the use of self in this flake is purely demonstrational, and if we wanted, we could simply assign the default output package to hello from Nix packages directly, which would give us the same result with fewer steps. And since our flake outputs multiple packages, we can actually explicitly select which one we want to use. If we pass no arguments or the path to the flake's parent directory, it will select the default package, just like when we ran the command for the first time. And if we wanted to choose the package under the hello output, it can be done with a sharp symbol. This is a general convention for commands working with flakes, so you can expect it to work with other commands like nix develop or nix os rebuild. Now that we know what the default nix flake does, let's try to edit it and see what else we can do here. So what many nix users like to do is add a let and in expression before the set returned by outputs, which can be very handy because it allows us to define some variables and write less boilerplate later. Let's try to define a variable called packages there and assign it to Nix packages legacy packages because it is quite long. Now every time we need to refer to it, we can simply write packages and save some space and keystrokes. Okay, so these outputs and Nix commands are cool, but what are the advantages of declaring stuff this way? Well, the first and most obvious advantage is that we can add as many inputs as we want which not only allows us to grab some random flakes from all over the internet, but also mix and match different versions of Nix packages itself, allowing us to grab older versions of any programs and libraries. Let's go ahead and add a second Nix packages input, call it Nix packages very old, and change its URL to be some older version of Nix packages, like NixOS 21.11. Where NixOS is the GitHub username, Nix packages is the name of the repository, and following ref is the name of the branch. The URL-like syntax you see here is quite flexible and allows you to fetch flakes from all over the internet. Like this link will get you a specific commit from GitHub, this one's the same as the first one, these two are for GitLab, another one for SourceHut, and some more for fetching tarballs and flakes located on your machines locally. You will find a link to a more complete list of examples in the description. It's also, for the most part, the exact same syntax as the one used in Nix commands from earlier, meaning you can supply these URLs to Nixflake show, Nix develop, Nix run, and so on. Which, of course, means you can run packages, activate shells, and rebuild systems from flakes hosted anywhere on the internet with just a couple of keystrokes. So let's return to our second Nix packages input and define another variable for it, once again, just for convenience. We can later use this variable to access older packages, functions, or whatever else this flake provides. To demonstrate, let's add another output, this time a development shell, and include two packages from different Nix packages versions in it. As we learned earlier, the Nix develop command used to activate the dev shell will look for the output located at devshells.system.default. So let's define it there and assign a makeshell function to it. As you can see, Nix flakes allow us to serve all kinds of code to other flakes, even including a function that creates shells in case of Nix packages. The Nix shells are very cool, and I'll certainly make more videos about them in the future, but right now all that matters is that we can put a NeoVim package coming from our first input and a Vim package coming from the second one into our Flakes build inputs. And then if we activate our development shell with the Nix develop command, we'll see that we now have access to a fresh version of NeoVim and a not so fresh version of Vim. By now, you've probably noticed that the outputs parameter is becoming quite large, plus the number of inputs will only increase as our flake grows, so how can we address this issue? Well, the easiest way to do it is by simply collapsing the parameter into some name, like inputs, meaning we'll have to reference it anytime we want to grab something from the inputs. This will save us from writing every input twice, but also force us to write slightly more code in the outputs. Well, that's one way to do it, but why not have both? 
Using the triple dot and add syntax, we can both collapse all the inputs into a variable and ask for them in a set only when we want to do so, without getting any unexpected argument errors. Meaning we can leave the most used inputs like self or nix packages in this set and access everything else from the inputs. As you can see, at this point, our flake structure starts to resemble something you would often see in the repos of more advanced Nix users. But the way you manage it is still highly personal, and will generally depend on the Flake's intended use case, be it serving your system, exposing packages to the internet, or just serving some library. But now, let's address the elephant in the room and look at the most useful feature of Nix Flakes, the lock file. You've probably already noticed that thanks to the Flake's lock mechanism, none of the inputs at the top have to explicitly define specific commit hashes. Because if you remember from the beginning of the video, when you run any of the Nix Flakes commands for the first time, it will automatically generate a flake.lock file in its parent directory, containing pinned commit IDs of all of your inputs. This lock file is no different from any other lock files used by modern package managers like npm or cargo, and you never have to touch it because Nix will manage everything in it for you. But still, if you want to check the commit hashes currently stored in it, we can use the nixflake metadata command. As you can see, aside from some general flake metadata like time and URL, it will also show us the inputs and their current revisions. You will generally want to update these from time to time to get fresh packages, and to do it, we can use the nixflake update command, which will once again check the latest commits of every branch in your inputs and bump their versions without any extra work needed from you. But naturally, some flakes you add to your inputs will have their own inputs that they depend on. So if we try to add the home manager flake to our inputs for example, running the nixflake metadata command will show both it and its own inputs as a tree. So at this point we have whole three different versions of nix packages, which may not be a lot now, but in larger flakes may start negatively affecting your download sizes. So what flakes allow us to do is make inputs depend on other inputs. Meaning we can tell home manager inputs to inherit its own Nix packages input from the one we have above. This may slightly affect reproducibility of your inputs, but can dramatically decrease download sizes and disk space usage. And now that we know how flakes work in general, let's try to add an entire Nix size configuration into our flake. But first, let's get rid of some outputs and inputs so I have more space on the screen. So once again, we first have to know where nixs rebuild command is going to look to find the configuration, which according to the man page is nixsconfigurations.hostname, which in my case is also called nixos. Let's place a nixs configuration at nixsconfigurations.nixos, which is once again defined with a function coming from nix packages called nixpackages.lib.nixos system. This function takes a set as its only parameter, allowing us to specify all kinds of stuff, but most importantly, the modules. Modules like configuration.nix, hardwareconfiguration.nix, or even inline modules that you can put here directly. Though we can remove hardwareconfiguration.nix because it's already imported in configuration.nix. Meaning that moving your NixOS system into a flake is simply a matter of putting your modules into the flakes directory and importing them here. At which point you can rebuild your system using this flake, using the nixos rebuild dash dash flake command. You can also explicitly specify the output with a sharp symbol, say if your flake contains multiple configurations that use the same host name. And if you omit the dash dash flake argument entirely, nixos will try to find a flake at etsy slash nixos or rebuild it from the same directory without a flake. So anyway, a really cool thing we can do right now is add a special args option to our nixos function, which will allow us to pass extra arguments to every single one of our modules. And the obvious use case of these special args is passing our entire inputs variable to the modules so we can later access packages and modules straight in our configuration.nix. So let's do exactly that using the inherit keyword, which is a shorthand for writing inputs equals inputs, and we can now go to our configuration.nix and access all these inputs. This way, we can import some modules here or add some packages to system packages. Once again, we are simply accessing the outputs of other flakes just like we did in the beginning of the video. And now that we are in configuration.nix, I want to talk about several problems you can run into when using flakes. Because since flakes run in a so-called pure evaluation mode, they require your Nix code to be more reproducible. 
which includes not using angle bracket syntax, explicitly specifying hashes in the fetching functions, and most importantly, having every single file staged when you are working with Git. This is a pitfall that many new Nix Flakes users find themselves in, so if your flakes are managed with Git, which ideally they should be, make sure to git add all newly created Nix files, or else your flake will simply pretend that they don't exist and throw scary errors at you. So let's finally return to the definition that I've mentioned in the beginning and try to read it again. So flakes is an experimental feature of the Nix package manager, they enforce a uniform structure for Nix projects, pin versions of their dependencies in a log file, and make it more convenient to write reproducible Nix expressions. I hope that you can now understand this definition, but if you have any questions about flakes, feel free to join our Discord server where you can ask any of them or just chat in general. To summarize, Nix flakes are an amazing system that allow us to share code with others, ensuring that it will always work the same way on any other system and making its purpose abundantly clear. There are still a ton of cool features to learn about flakes not mentioned in this video, so let it just be your kickstarter on your flakes journey. And after watching it, make sure to read the Nix flakes wiki page on the official Nix.js wiki, you'll find a link to it in the description. And now I'd like to thank everyone who supports the channel and keeps it going, more specifically, Hoskins, Aiding Bad Ponder, Lasselus, Naughty Nut, Xavier, Albert C, Pitrian, Tibalt Mole, Shen, Z, Workflow, Zach Beer, This is Liam, Mash to Less, BOFH, Zamino, Arunoruto, Veronica, Fire Squid 6, Lucian Tor, Uncle Simon, Harbinger, Fernando Alex, Crackleware, Anonymous Donations, and of course everyone who supported the channel previously. As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.